ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, helping verbs, notes. We just have a little bit more that we're gonna go over. So yesterday we did kind of day one and day two, which is what a helping verb is. It works with the main verb to complete the verb phrase. That was your exit ticket. And today I'm just gonna go over something called verb conjugation. And it's something that if we had more time to spend with one another, we would be able to go over more, but you'll talk about it next year in seventh grade as well. So. I'm gonna share my screen, and if you don't notice, I've got a little bit of an homage to a student as well as to Mr. Maroka. So uh, let, uh, let me share my screen, and we will get going on day three of our helping verbs notes. Well, day three, even though it's day two for us. All right, so on day three of notes, we have this thing called verb conjugation. And um, a lot of it is what we do naturally when we speak, we change the verb so that it fits with the tense as well as the subject. So, verb conjugation. And this is notes that you wanna put in your notebook because remember, you can use your notebook next year in seventh grade as, long, as well as your red grammar book. So if you have your red grammar book, which all of you should, um, this is something you're gonna hold on to and you're going to keep for next year, okay? All right, so. We talked about this a little bit yesterday in the notes, but helping verbs give us the ability to change the tense of a verb and all these tenses have a name. And so uh, you actually talk about this in Latin class as well, and you'll talk about it again next year in Latin. Um, the difference between saying I ate, I have eaten, and I was eating. They're different tenses. They mean slightly different things based on the point in time or we also can say the range in time in which the event was, is, or will be happening. So it's the difference between I did my homework or I will do my homework. One of them, you've completed that action in the past. The other one is something you will complete in the future. Now this looks like a lot of stuff on here, but I wanted to at least kind of expose you to it so that you can see it. And remember you can pause and you can always come back to this sheet as whenever you need to, but basically, there is this idea of simple, progressive, perfect, and perfect progressive. But um, it's kind of like in Latin class where you talked about the perfect versus the imperfect. So um, I ran is the perfect. It is a completed action in the past. You did it, it's done, it's over. I was running is kind of incomplete, it's still in process. You say something like, I was running when a bug flew down my throat. You hadn't completed that running action, you were still doing it when something happened to you. And so what's really cool about English and um, what's also cool about a few other languages, such as Greek, is there are a lot of things that we're able to say. Some languages don't have as many distinctions between their verbs, and so it's harder to know when something has happened in time. So um, if you look at simple tenses here on the left, this is probably the most important column. These are just examples, okay? So simple tenses are events that occur at a particular point in time. I ate, I ate at three o'clock. It's done, that's what I did, that's it. But if you talk about progressive tenses, and next you're gonna talk about this thing called participles, but that actions that are in process. So that was the, I was running when a bug flew down my throat. And then there, that's that idea of perfect. Perfect is a completed action in the past. It's done, it's perfect. And if you think about it perfect, it's like it's done, it's in a nice neat little box. Um, it's an action that is completed before another time or event has occurred. So I, I have eaten, when like you're meeting with somebody, I have eaten already. Like that's, it's, it's a perfect action that was completed at another time than what we're in right now. And then um, this perfect progressive is like, we don't use this very much, but like I had been eating when something happened. So I'm just giving, I'm just exposing this to you. You, you don't really need to do anything specifically with this. I just wanted to expose it to you because as you move forward in your grammar and language classes, you're gonna encounter these ideas. Simple, progressive, perfect, and then like this weird kind of perfect progressive. So I just wanted you to see that this is all, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five times three, 12 different ways to say something about eating, depending on when it was happening, whether it was complete, whether it was not complete, whether you will be doing it. And so it's just a lot, it's just kind of a neat, nice little chart that some of you will love 
to help you see all of those different tenses, okay? Um, that's it. That's all I wanted to expose you to today. Um, you aren't going to have to use any of this specifically in here. We're just working on helping verbs, but helping verbs are the way that we're able to express these things. This is how we are able to communicate all the different meanings so that you know that I am working on my homework versus I did work on my homework. There's a difference in what you're saying to somebody and helping verbs allow us to say those different things. Okay. Uh, again, this chart is just for you so that you can kind of have a, like something you can refer to. Um, but you can see that if you look down at the future perfect progressive, I will have been eating. That's where you can get like three helping verbs in there. Okay. So that's why sometimes there are zero, sometimes there are one, sometimes there are two, sometimes there could be three. And um, it's just that we in English have, we have a lot of different ways we can say things. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, your homework tonight is exercise two. And then on Friday, your homework will be the test. And that's it. That's all we can do this year. That's all we have time for. Um, I'm going to be putting up on my website over the summer just different grammar exercises that you can do to kind of make sure you don't lose any of it before next year. Cause I know some of you are a little nervous about having to do grammar next year. And you're like, I, I don't feel like I really did it this year. And I know I, I feel the same way, but um, I've been working with Miss Enki on how we can make sure that you're ready to go for seventh grade next year. And one of the ways we're going to do that is I'm going to provide some additional summer opportunities for you. Okay. So nice to see you guys. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.